In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a spinning wheel animation, random name picker, or whatever you'd like to call it yourself, in PowerPoint. This is how it works. You click the spin or stop button, and once you click it again, it randomly goes to a new segment of the wheel, wherever you stop it. So that's what we're going to do. A few variations on the same thing. So in this one, it's not names, but rather features of music. I am a music teacher, so where I'm going to use this in class is play a piece of music, and wherever this stops is what the students will have to answer about that piece of music. So the way this works is I click it, and when I play a piece of music, the students will have to comment on the rhythmic features of that music. Spin it again new recording and they'll have to identify what instruments they're playing. This is a really good and fun way of emulating what they'll have to do in the actual exam. Third variation then is instead of the wheel spinning, I've got this little bottle in the middle and it spins instead. So it's like spin the bottle. So what we're gonna do is build one from scratch and I'll show you how the variations work each time. We're gonna cover the animations and we're also gonna cover the sounds and how I get all that to work as well and how I get the formatting of the table. To start off with, in between these two first two slides, I'm going to add a new slide in. I can select all by hitting Command and A and delete what's there. And then I'm going to come up here to the Insert tab. And what you need to insert to get this going is a chart and a pie chart. This 2D pie chart is what we're going to do. As soon as I hit this, we're going to get an Excel document. So don't panic, but just know that that's going to happen. And you'll think to yourself, where has my PowerPoint presentation gone? But don't fear, it's still there, and that's what it looks like to begin with. This is the default, what they give you. They give you a first to fourth quarter, and it's a sales pie chart to begin with. We're going to ignore that now in a moment and reconfigure this the way we need it. So the thing that you need to understand about the Excel document is whatever you put in here are going to be your items. So if I want names, I'll just do for now, name one, name two, name three, and name four. If I want each segment of the pie chart from names one to four to have an equal amount, then I just need to make sure that these are all set to the same number. So I can say one, 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 and one. And now hopefully if everything has worked out, I go over back to my PowerPoint and you get this thing here with name one, two, three, and four instead of the sales first quarter, second quarter, and so on. If I want to add more names, let's say you have 15. And I can just take this this is an Excel trick, but if I have those highlighted and there's a one, two, three, four, this should give me the name up to name 15. And then similarly, I have ones here, so I can just select those and drag them down so they're all one. Then what should happen is I should have 15 equal segments of my pie chart now. And I do. And it colors them automatically for you. You can change your color theme to whichever you want. And that's actually the theme I went for up above in the first demo. If you don't need it, you can get rid of this title now. And then the other thing that we need to do is format it so that the name one and so on goes into the table. And how we do that is open our chart design tab, come over to quick layout. And then if you press this first one, you can get the names back in there. Again, we don't need the title, so we'll just get rid of that. And also we don't need to know that it's 6% or 7%. So in order to edit the names, what we're going to do is select one of them and all of them highlight. Then what we do is over in our format pane, this opens up here. And what I can do is I can edit different parts of the text. So to begin with, I'm just going to go over here to this chart icon. And what we want is category name. So that's the name one, two, three, and four, and so on. And we don't want to show the percentage. We just want the name in there. If you want to then go further and tweak the, how the name looks, we can do that up in our format drop down. So if I want the text fill to be white, for instance, I can do that. If I want it to be a shadow on the text, just to highlight it a little bit more. If I want it to be bigger, I go back over to home and make that bigger. Depending on how many names you have, it might only be possible to make the size a little bit bigger before you start getting into formatting issues. But that's basically how you go about formatting the table. The next part of this video is gonna be how do we animate the spinning wheel and how do we make that look random every time. So the first thing we're gonna do is insert the shapes that we'll need. Insert a circle for our button first. Hold down shift to get a perfect circle. And what we'll do is we're just gonna type in spin and stop. Then the other shape we'll need is the arrow pointer. So this can be easily done with just a triangle if we want. And I'll make this a bit longer this way and I'll turn it around. So basically this arrow is just gonna sit on the upper left-hand corner of our circle, like there. 
And if I take the spin and stop button, I'm going to pop that in the middle of the circle. So we have all the elements that we need. And now I'm going to show you how, go, how you go about animating the spin. So we take this chart, go into animations, go into spin, and then we get that. If I open up the animation pane over to my right here, you'll see that that's what's happening there. This is where the magic will happen now. If I go to this triggers button, I can say that on the click of the oval that we have there, it's called oval four here. On the click of oval four, this will trigger that animation. So I go into full presentation mode. I'll click the spin and stop button. And that animation happens, it's triggered. In this animation, there's a couple of things that we need to change. So we want it to be 360 clockwise. The timing though should be repeat until next click. And I'm gonna show you how that works now in a moment. So basically what we have now is it spins around endlessly. And then to get it to stop, what we have to do is select the chart again and do an, an appear animation. This also needs to be triggered on the click of oval four, because that's gonna be our stop function. And this is what allows it to stop at whatever rotation it's at. One last thing I like to change here is the speed. So if you want this spin to happen a bit faster, you just need to go into timing and change that to one seconds. So I hit it now, spin, and then when I click it again, it'll stop there. So that's basically the functionality. The last thing I'm gonna show you is how to get the sound to work. So on this spin animation, you can actually choose to assign a sound to it. One sound I've grabbed before is a spin the wheel sound. So I found that online from a YouTube video and I just uh, downloaded the WAV file of that and I have it in here in my PowerPoint. And when I do that, it just makes that sound. The other thing that you may have noticed is when I spin this and stop it randomly, name four, for instance, here is now kind of upside down. So what I did to fix that in my next demonstration is I have all of the words that I wanted angled in towards the center of the circle. So while structure is upside down over here, if it ever lands on structure, it will always be the right way up. If I have it up to the top left. So this is working the exact same way. I've just put the text in manually this time. Unlike before where it autofill the names one to 15. On this one here, I've just inserted a text box like so, written in chords, and then I've dragged and manipulated those manually. So that's a little more time consuming, but you get probably closer to what you want to happen as a look and feel. The very last thing I'm gonna show you is this bottle thing. I have this bottle here that spins every time instead of the circle spinning. And the ex exact same things are happening here. So the first thing I got this bottle from the insert 3D models. You can type in whatever you're looking for. I just happen to put in bottle. You'll notice that this says beer on it. So I just flipped it over there because it's a 3D model. You, you can actually do that, rotate it. And now it just looks like a generic bottle. This is for classroom use. So I couldn't have beer be the on the top of it. And then once I have that in, I can go back to my animations. And what you'll see is there's two animations going on here. There's a spin animation and there's the appear animation working the exact same way the animation worked in the previous one, only this time we're not rotating the circle, we're rotating this bottle on the trigger of the 3D model. So I go into my triggers, on the click of the 3D model, it'll spin. And then on the second animation, on the click again, it will pause. And again, just to reiterate, I've got now a spin the bottle sound and I've got it going quite fast, 0.5 seconds, and I have it repeating until next click, which allows me to do the stop and start. So that's how you make a spinning animation in PowerPoint.